going to give a brief overview of my presentation. First, I'll be discussing some background terminology and context behind the problem. Next, I'm going to discuss some improvements I've made to the upper bound on maximal tournament code size. And then finally, I'm going to discuss a graphical interpretation of the problem, as well as some work I've done on related problems. So let's start with some background and terminology. What is a code? Not this kind of code. Not this kind of code either. But this kind of code. A code in this context refers to a set of strings where each string has the same length, k, and where each string is made up of characters from an alphabet of zeros, ones, and stars. In this example, we've got a code with length 7, so each string has 7 characters in it, and size 8. The size of a code refers to how many strings are present in the code. Now before discussing tournament codes as a specific subset of codes, we have to discuss the notion of comparability with respect to both characters and strings. In our three-letter alphabet, 0, 1, and star, comparability works just as you'd expect for zeros and ones. Zero is considered equal to itself, one is equal to itself, and one is considered greater than zero. However, the third letter of the alphabet, star, is not considered comparable to either zero or one. And this is what gives tournament codes some of the special properties that they have. A tournament code is a code with the, uh, with the property of comparability between every pair of strings. What this means is that I can take any pair of strings in a tournament code and determine which of them is greater and which of them is strictly lesser than the other by a procedure which I'm going to outline now. So over here we have an example of a tournament code of length 6 and size 3. So there are three strings in the tournament code and each has six characters in it. So first, let's determine which of the first two strings is larger. To compare two strings in a tournament code, I look at every, uh, every index where neither string has a star and the strings are not equal. So in this case, it would be indices. Now, if one of the strings is strictly larger than the other string in every position, such that neither string is one and uh, such that neither string is star and neither string is equal to the other, then I call that string larger. So in this case, since the second string has a 1 in positions 1 and 5, while the first string has a 0 in those positions, I call the second string greater than the first. I can repeat this procedure with the second and the third string to determine that the third string is also greater than the second string. Finally, if I look at the final pair of strings in this tournament code, the first and the third string, I can determine that the first string is strictly greater than the third string. One thing you might notice about this specific tournament code is that the comparability property in this tournament code is not transitive. What that means is that even though the first string is less than the second string and the second string is less than the third string, it doesn't mean that the first is less than the third string. Now just to give some clarifications on the definition of tournament codes, let's go over an example of a code that is not a tournament code for several reasons. This is a code of length 3 and size 3 as well. In the first two strings, we see that the first string is less than the second string at position 1, but greater than the second string at position 2. Therefore, these two strings are not comparable. However, if I look at the second and the third string, I notice that there are no positions where neither string is star and where both strings are not equal. Therefore, the second string is also not comparable to the third string. This leads to the natural question, since the property of comparability is so restrictive with strings. What is the value of t of k, the size of the largest possible tournament code I can have, with strings of length k? Some previous work has been done on this problem. In 1987, Collins, Shore, and Stembridge proved a construction for a lower bound, giving an asymptotic lower bound of k to the 3 halves. In other words, there exists a tournament code of size k to the 3 halves containing only length k strings. Additionally, in 1985, Van Lint showed that k to the 1 half log base 2 of k is an upper bound on the largest possible size of a tournament code. Now I'm going to present a few of the improvements, both conditional and unconditional, which I've made to the upper bound on maximal size tournament codes. In 1985, Van Lint used something called the standard form method in order to generate the following recurrence. By solving this recurrence, he was able to achieve this upper bound of k to the 1 half log base 2 of k. In my work here at RSI, I've slightly improved the recurrence to, uh, to t of k is less than or equal to the square root of k times t of k over 2. 
And with this, I've been able to show that t of k is at most some constant times k to the 1 fourth plus epsilon times log base 2 of k. Additionally, I've done some work on a conditional upper bound. So I've been able to demonstrate, actually, that the number of zeros and ones in a maximal size tournament code determines what an upper bound is on that tournament code's size. So if I define f of k to be an indicator function of the number of zeros and ones in the tournament code, in other words, more specifically, f of k is like the inverse frequency of the, of the zeros and ones in the tournament code, then we can show by some algebra that the maximal size of a tournament code is upper bounded by k to the log of f of k. So this has some pretty good implications for upper bounding the size of tournament codes. In particular, uh, showing the frequency of zeros and ones is 1 over k, or 1 over k to the sum power, will give us this asymptotic k to the sum constant times log base 2 of k. However, if we can show the number of zeros and ones is always at least some fraction of the total number of characters in a maximal tournament code, then we can achieve this polynomial upper bound on tournament code maximal size. Now I'm going to discuss a graphical interpretation of the problem. So you may be wondering, why are tournament codes called tournament codes? The reason for this is because we can consider every string in a tournament code as a player in a round robin tournament. Then based on the comparability property of tournament codes, because I can always determine between every pair of strings which string is larger and which string is lesser, this is analogous to saying that one player in this round robin tournament beats the other player. So in this example, C, the string C, beats the string H if C is considered greater than H in our comparability procedure. In graph theory, structures called tournaments are complete graphs with n vertices such that there is a directed edge from every, uh, between every pair of vertices. Now this is basically analogous to a round robin tournament in the same way. In particular, if we look at every column of a tournament code, what every column is doing is, is it is imposing what is called a directed complete bipartite graph on this tournament on n vertices. So what that means is every column is going to direct an edge from every string with a 1 in its position to every, st to every string with a 0 in that position, forming what is called this directed biclique. Now if I look over all the columns and cover the n vertices with every column's directed by clique, it's going to form a complete round robin tournament on these vertices. And this is known as an edge covering. So the problem, the problem of maximal tournament codes becomes equivalent to the following problem in graph theory. What is the minimum number of directed complete by cliques we need to edge cover a tournament on t vertices? Now, if we relax some of the conditions, we can get some related problems in graph theory. So for example, if we consider the undirected version of the problem, we have what is the minimum number of undirected by cliques needed to cover a complete graph on n, uh, on n vertices called k sub n, or a clique on n vertices. This is a well-known problem. And the solution to this, uh, we're going to demonstrate here a, co a construction for n equals 8. So what we do first is we assign a binary string to a unique binary string to each vertex. And based on this, we can construct three bipartite graphs based on each digit in every vertex. When I combine these three bipartite graphs together, I get a complete undirected graph. Thus, the answer to this problem is actually the ceiling of logarithm base 2 of n. So this problem is a well-known problem. I've considered a few other variants which are relevant to the maximal tournament code problem. The problem of vertex-weighted bipartite coverings of the complete graph has an answer n times the log base 2 of n. So if I weight each bipartite graph by the sum of the vertices in the graph. And additionally, I've been able to prove this asymptotic formula for the number of bounded by cliques needed to cover a complete graph of vertices. In conclusion, demonstrating this connection between the number of zeros and ones and the maximal size tournament code upper bound points us in the direction of looking towards the number of zeros and ones and trying to further improve that bound in order to improve the tournament code bound. And I conjecture because of this that t of k is in fact polynomial in k. And I would like to acknowledge the following people, in particular my mentor, Mr. Brandon Tran, my tutor, Dr. John Rickert, Dr. Tanya Kavanova of the MIT Mathematics Department, 
and all of my sponsors, the CEE, RSI, and MIT for allowing me to conduct my research here this summer. Thank you. Thanks very much, Brian. We'll start off with questions from the panel of judges. Yes. Can you give a hint as to where that your group insurance comes from? Is it derived from a uh, model or what? Yeah, so the improved recurrence comes from considering Van Lint's standard form method in combination with this graphical interpretation of the problem. So in order to generate this recurrence, what I do is I look at the number of zeros and ones needed in order, or the size of the bike leaks needed in order to cover the graph. And based on this, uh, instead of simply looking for smaller copies of tournament, which is what this recurrence is doing, I'm able to do that in combination with showing that the smaller tournament codes have to essentially cover some parts of the larger tournament code up to a certain size. Just a reminder to please try to repeat the question. Oh, um, further questions from the judges. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, applications for the tournament code? I mean, obviously, it looks like this round robin type code. Has it been used for any sort of predictions or anything like that? Uh, so the question is on applications of tournament codes. So tournament codes are actually moted by, motivated by uh, cousin codes called comma-free codes, also known as self-synchronizing codes. These codes have been studied in areas such as biology and cryptography as early as the 1950s. Um, in particular, at one point, um, they were studied in relation to protein synthesis and the language of DNA. So tournament codes are closely related and the constructions for some large tournament codes are actually based off of these comma-free codes. Further questions from the judges? Any questions from the audience? All right, 